day everyone! I am Jubilee Ramos and welcome to another video lecture. For today's lesson, we will discuss American Romanticism and New England Transcendentalism, Rip Van Winkle. But before we start our discussion, I would like to ask you, what can you say about the picture? What do you think is his role in our discussion for today? Anyone? Thank you very much for those who answered and for us to know if your answers are correct and related to the lesson that we will discuss, let us now dive deeper into the story of Rip Van Winkle. Here are our objectives for today's lesson. First, describe how the Romanticism era was called the read beginning of American literature based on the works of the author during this period. Second, describe the plot and characters of Irving's Rip Van Winkle. And lastly, analyze the structure of the text referring to the significance of first-person narrative across stories told by the same narrator. And now, let us discuss Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle was written by Washington Irving. He is a lawyer who pursued a writing career after discovering that practicing law did not interest him. He is known for being the father of the American short story, biographer, historian, and diplomat. Also known as Dietrich Knickerbocker, Jonathan Oldstyle, and Geoffrey Crayon Storian. He was born on April 3, 1783 in New York City. He was named after George Washington. His parents are William Irving and Sarah Sanders. He died on November 28, 1859 in Tarrytown, New York. His notable quote is, There is a certain relief in change, even though it be from bad to worse, as I have found in traveling in a stagecoach that it is often a comfort to shift one's position and be bruised in a new place. Irving proved that American writers could compete with their British colleagues when most Americans read British authors almost exclusively. He was one of the first American writers to achieve an international reputation with his short stories. Irving had a unique talent for infusing his stories with mystical, fairy tale, quality most notably in Rip Van Winkle and The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, and therefore influenced early American folklore. Modern readers continue to be enchanted by his exquisite writing style, full of gentle humor and evocative descriptions. His captivating stories are likely to continue popular for a long time. Based on Collins' English Dictionary, Rip Van Winkle has two meanings. The first one is a person who is oblivious to changes, especially in social attitudes or thought. And second, a person who sleeps a lot. Based on the meaning of the name Rip Van Winkle took from Collins' English Dictionary, you might have an idea what kind of person Rip is and what would be the story we'll tackle. For you to have a background knowledge and to understand what is Rip Van Winkle all about, here is a short video from Creative Kids Learning taken from YouTube. Rip Van Winkle Rip Van Winkle was a lazy man. He slept the whole day. His wife tried her best to get Rip Van Winkle take up a job. When he did get a job, he was asked to leave. 
because he slept too much. One day, Rip Van Winkle, tired of his wife telling him to get a job, ran up a mountain with his favorite companion, his dog. He reached the top, crossed a stream, went to a spot where nobody ever came, and he sat down there. He had never had so much exercise in his life. He was just getting back his breath when he heard someone call his name. Rip Van Winkle. Strange. Nobody knows me here. Then who is calling me? Thought Rip Van Winkle. He turned around and saw a funny looking man carrying a big barrel. The funny looking man said, Please help me carry this barrel to my friends a little below the stream. Answer orally. What do you think was in the barrel? Rip Van Winkle had climbed so far up the mountain to avoid work. Here was a man asking for help. He first decided to refuse, but then thought, Let me help the poor man, then I can rest. So he and the funny looking man walked down to a cave in the mountain below the stream. There, Rip Van Winkle saw many other funny looking men. All of them were playing. They ignored him. As soon as the barrel was placed on the ground, the men pulled out mugs, dipped them into the barrel and drank something. It was a strange, sweet drink. Rip Van Winkle too dipped a mug in the barrel and drank it. It tasted good. He had one more mug. After having three mugs, he fell asleep. When he awoke, he saw that all the funny-looking men had gone. He called out to his dog, but there was no response. He could not believe he had slept the whole day and night. He got up. His joints ached. As he started walking back home, he saw the village down below, which somehow seemed changed. When he entered the village, he saw new faces. All the people looked at him and rubbed their chins. Seeing them do this, Rip Van Winkle did the same. To his surprise, he found that he had grown a foot-long beard overnight. Rip Van Winkle was puzzled. He believed that he knew most of the village folks well. But today, he could not see anyone who was known to him. The children made fun of him, running behind him. Rip Van Winkle stopped by a place where there had been a school and asked the crowd that had gathered, Where is Shuna, the schoolmaster? Somebody said, Oh, Shuna, he went to war in 63 and never came back. And uh, Van Dammel? asked Rip Van Winkle. He died 18 years back said another voice in the crowd. Rip Van Winkle thought, Am I going mad? Had I slept all these years on the mountain? Finally, Rip Van Winkle asked, Does anyone here remember Rip Van Winkle? A woman said, Yes, he was my father. He went up the mountains 21 years back, but never returned. His dog came back without him. Rip Van Winkle was overjoyed. He said, Daughter, it is me, Rip Van Winkle. Don't you recognize me? Oh, my father, it is really you. Where have you been all this while? Said his daughter. Father and daughter hugged each other. Rip Van Winkle had indeed slept for 21 years. After watching the video of the story of Rip Van Winkle, let us now move forward to discuss the setting of the story. The story begins about five or six years before the American Revolution and ends 20 years later. 
The action takes place in a village in eastern New York near the Hudson River and the Catskill Mountains. The river was named after Henry Hudson, an Englishman who discovered it in 1609. The Catskill Mountains are named after Caterskill, the Dutch word for Wild Cat Creek, a nearby stream. Many other streams and lakes, waterfalls can be found in the Catskills. And next, we have the characters. The first one is Rip Van Winkle. He is the main character in the story. He is Mick, a seagoing near dual resident of the village who wanders off to the mountains and meets strange men playing nine pins. Second, we have Dame Van Winkle. She is Rip's nagging wife. Third, Nicholas Vedder owner of a village in where men folk congregate. Fourth, Derek Van Brommel. He is the village schoolmaster. Fifth, Wolf. He is Rip's dog. Sixth, man carrying keg up the mountain. Spirit of Englishman Henry Hudson, explorer of the Hudson River. Seventh, the nine pin bowlers. Henry Hudson's crewman from his ship, the Half Moon. Number eight, Brom Dutcher, neighbor of Rip who went off to war while Rip was sleeping. Number nine, the old woman, the woman who identifies Rip when he returns to the village after his sleep. Number ten, Peter Vanderdonk, oldest resident of the village. He confirms Rip's identity and cites evidence indicating Rip's strange tale is true. Number 11, Judith Gardiner. She is Rip's married daughter. She takes her father in after he returns from his sleep. Number 12, Mr. Gardiner. He is Judith's husband and a farmer. Number 13, Rip Van Winkle II. Rip Near's Dual Sun. Number 14, we have Rip Van Winkle III, Rip's infant grandchild. Its mother is Judith Gardiner. 15, Van Sake, Village Person. 16, Jonathan Doolittle, owner of the Union Hotel. The establishment that replaced the village in 17 the Catskill Mountains and 18 various men, women, and children of the village. Now that we are done with the characters, let us now move on to the type of work, source, and publication information. Rip Van Winkle is a short story one of America's most beloved based on German folk tales. It was first published in a collection of Irving's works called The Sketchbook in 1819-1820. to And of course, we have the climax. The climax of the story occurs when the townspeople recognize Rip after he returns to his village. And we have the game of nine pins. Nine pins is a game or sport in which a participant rolls wooden balls on a lane in an attempt to knock down nine bottle-shaped wooden pins arranged in the shape of a diamond. The participant may bowl up to three balls to knock down all the pins. Nine pins is similar to the modern sport of bowling. Let us now move forward to discuss the themes of the story. First, we have tyranny versus freedom, the tyranny of marriage, the tyranny of day-to-day -day responsibilities, and the more literal tyranny of King George III of Britain over his American citizens are all explored in Rip Van Winkle. In the face of these tyrannies, the novel raises several challenges about maintaining our freedom. 
By extension, the story makes us ponder what it is to be free from tyranny, what a tyrant is, and why America and its population are in such desperate need of answers to these problems. Second, we have active versus passive resistance. Rip Van Winkle may value his own liberty, but he cannot be said to actively fight for it. Rip is the quintessential passive resistor. He throws up his hands, shakes his head, and looks up into the sky in response to his wife. This resigned gesture neither rejects nor accepts anything. Furthermore, when Dame Van Winkle was still living, Rip could get away from her by simply ignoring her. Even though she is Rip's primary opponent, there is never a single confrontation between Rip Van Winkle and Dame Van Winkle. Rip's passiveness in gaining independence from King George III is even more pronounced. He becomes a free citizen of the United States by calmly sleeping through the American Revolution. Third, Truth, History, and Storytelling Rip Van Winkle is a framed story in which a fictional storyteller is said to have collected it and in so doing, establishes the story status as a credible historical account. But we have reason to doubt it status as such. Knickerbocker does not research using historical text. He instead collects his stories straight from the mouths of Dutch families. His historical research consists of oral storytelling. What's more, the report includes obviously mythological and magical figures, the strange beings that haunt the Catskill Mountains. The story opens with a poem about truth, but in the first paragraph, Knickerbocker notes the magical beauty of the Catskills. There is the immediate suggestion that truth is not the same as historical fact. Number 4. Labor versus Productivity Rip Van Winkle distinguishes unproductive and productive labor or profitable effort. Rip is the most visible example of someone who works for no pay. While his own land becomes seriously run down, he is happy to assist in gardens and farms that are not his own. He'll spend the entire day hunting squirrels or fishing, even if he knows he'll come away with very little. He's busy but he's not productive. Furthermore, Derek Von Bommel, the highly clever schoolmaster who has earnest discussion with others at the Asian Inn about long out-of-date publications, is not visibly preoccupied with an ultimately meaningless exercise. Knickerbocker, it is said, is also guilty of unproductive labor. He toils over his historical reports, although most people regard them as insignificant no matter how extensive and correct they are. And lastly, change versus stasis. And Rip Van Winkle, there is a dynamic conflict between change and stasis, and by extension, past and future. After waking up, Rip returns to the mountain to find that everything has changed. The town has increased in size and population. His children have grown up, his wife has passed away, and he now has a grandchild. Rip is no longer a subject of the king because the United States of America is now an independent free nation. Even though this is true, Rip finally returns to his old life. Here are the references used for this video lecture. And 
that's all for our discussion for today. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you for watching.